Stop. Everybody, we're back. It's Neb, Muse. And You're not Neb. We are still stuck in the mud somewhere in the swamps of XM 2008. So the last episode was a bit of a rough one, and uh, this one was not nearly as bad, but I did want to issue a very similar content warning because we do reference the events of the last episode with Tom from White Plains. Um, so we do talk briefly about suicide and topics like that. Uh, not nearly as in-depth, but if that stuff irks you out and you're not a fan of any of that, uh, you can skip ahead a little bit. But in the fallout of the Tom from White Plains phone call and subsequent panic surrounding his possible on-air suicide, a local newspaper is reporting that, quote, Opie of the Opie Show saved Tom's life. Opie of the Opie Show? Opie is running with the gag, requesting hero songs to be played as bumpers coming out of break. And a funny comment comes in on their instant feedback. They write, hey, hero, can you save Anthony from from himself? <laughs> that might be a tough one. I might have to, no. I might have to get uh, the boys together. Maybe Spider-Man, Superman. Some parts of ONA that I find charming are their more wholesome bits. And Opie running with the bit that he is, in fact, the only person that saved Tom's life and having everybody around him refer to him as a hero. That's a pretty funny bit. I don't, know. I don't know about wholesome contextually. I was going to say it doesn't hurt anybody, but once again, the context. Now that the situation is over, I guess we're fine. Yeah, we're in the clear. But we put ourselves in that situation. They, they do get phone calls from Tom up until about 2012. I don't know if we ever find out what happens to Tom, though. I think phone calls just stop. And I don't know if we ever actually get an official word on when he passed away or if he passed away. So that's just going to have to be a mystery for everybody. The boys are replaying the audio from Tom's phone call. And Jim talks about how humor played into how they were able to talk Tom down and how ball busting can be an effective tool in raising people's spirits. This is something that we kind of talked about a little bit. Yeah. About how. Um, oh, yeah. Meeting somebody where they are. That and also how we, we ask if Anthony has people around him that can help. Someone left a comment in the last episode talking about how it feels like it's sad how people seem to try to get on Anthony's level. And no matter how hard they try to connect with him, it's just in one ear out the other. Yeah, and he'll like just go to a different level. Yeah, he'll just change it up. Be like, he okay. just runs away from himself. Yeah, if you're being too serious, I gotta bring it back to jokes. Yeah, and if you're being too jokey, then I'll make a joke and pretend it's too serious. Exactly, yeah. Can I tell you something? Yeah. And this is just from all the times I've been depressed around the cellar or wherever it happened to be. When you're in, in that mood, and you do know people kind of care for you, and your friends are kind of teasing you... It really can make you feel better. It yeah. really does. Like, Jay, it puts you in your up, place. Stupid. Like, it, but you know yeah. that your friends. There is something kind of familiar about that. Yep. Um, and there's something very warm about your friends kind of beating up on you a little bit, as long as you know that they they care about you. Yeah, because right. that's the only reason they're beating up on you like that. Because yeah. they, they, you know, give a crap about you. Right, well, because they're detached sociopaths. That too, especially all you <laughs> comics. Jesus. <laughs> and then Jimmy, biggest yeah. bunch of lunatics I've ever met. <laughs> I don't know if. Just because it's something that Jim is familiar with and used to, that it's the most healthy way about it? Yeah, but it is very much like meeting somebody where they are. If you have someone who has been shouted out their entire fucking life and, like, told they're worthless or whatever, and then they get to a point where they can have a friendship, like, it's a real trustworthy relationship, it's gonna be fucking weird if all of a sudden you, you're, like, acting like, we care about you. you yeah. Know, your people, they're, they're gonna be like, Bleh! And it's... Bleh! And and A, that's not good for, for on-air radio. No. But you can't do it off-air because they're not going to listen then either. Yeah, no. It's like the only time Anthony is ever willing to listen is if it's content, if yeah. it's on the air. Mm -hmm. So you have to walk a fine line, but we're realizing that neither approach really helps. It's interesting that they're talking about Tom. To their credit, I guess, as people who are not trained in de-escalation tactics... 
they did what they knew how to do. And luckily for everybody, yeah. it worked out. <laughs> so the author of the article also makes mention of the star couple, Anthony. Really? They talk about both of them in the same fucking thing? Yeah. What? Yeah. Wow, okay. In the newspaper, there is a column, f- a person who writes on radio. So when you're talking about Opie of the Opie show, you got to talk about Anthelini. Of the Olive Garden. You got, yeah, you got to kill all the birds with the same stone here. Uh, assuring readers that the couple is real and not a publicity stunt, because this is the going. I don't know how anyone really thought that would be an effective publicity stunt anyway. What, what are they selling? The traffic? It's Anthelini.com, everybody. Make sure to watch Jill Nicolini's traffic reports and listen to Anthony in the morning. Did they have merch? No. They didn't have anything to sell? No, no, no. I don't believe so. Unfortunately, the Wayback Machine will not give me any access to the website. I can't look at any of it. He eventually does call in the writer of the news article and makes a comment about how many pictures of the couple there are on Anthelini website. This is the most photographed couple in the history of, of media. and it also The history of white trash. It, it just almost, say it like we're saying it. it. It almost has this feeling of like you're afraid it's going to end, so you got to get proof. Oh, so, ever, so I need pictures at every corner. Yep. And I'm pretty sure Jill is the one insisting on all the photos, like Anthony isn't. Yeah, she's like an influencer, a traffic influencer. She's going to get free traffic. Traffic to the website. I was reminded it was on Jim's birthday in 2007 that Jill Nicolini was first in studio to give Jim Norton a cake. And it was also a double-edged sword of like, hey, we're here for the party. But also, Anthony's been making mention about her on the on the show. So she's going to come in. She's going to take a picture. She's going to make Anthony all nervous because she's his like celebrity crush. And now we're a year later... And now they are a couple, and it's like, oh, look how far we come type thing. Mm-hmm. So I don't know if there's necessarily anything outwardly making either of them anxious or nervous that the relationship is going to end. Yeah, no, I think it's just two different dynamics. Yeah, because honestly, at this point, nothing on the surface makes it seem like there's anything hindering this relationship, nothing going to get in the way. Because Anthony's talking about being in love, and they just hang out all the time. Play video games. I don't know if Jill plays video games. It seems like Anthony doesn't have much time for it anymore. She likes to play, um, what's a video game about driving? She likes to play Drive. Oh, yeah, she she, she plays some GTA. Play GTA. A game Anthony is in. Wait, what? Did I know that? I don't think you did. Opie, Anthony, Jim, I think their producer, Steve. Do they have their own little fake radio station? They're on radio stations, yeah. What? Yeah. So then I did listen to them. You might have. Yeah. All the crap you do all day. Who fucking cares? Anyway, it's what the this is dear. from all the fear. It's what the drink all day. It doesn't seem like he has a lot of time for things he likes anymore. He, he's doing a lot of hanging out with uh, Jill. He's doing the benefits. But they go to Dave and Buster's. They do go to Dave and Buster's, and that gets mentioned actually later on because they go there again. Yeah, I'm sure they go there all the fucking time. Where else are you gonna go? Where else are you gonna fucking go? Well, I guess for him, a fucking shooting range could be an equivalent of a playground. Yeah. But I don't know if Jill is interested in shooting guns. Yeah. I don't know. Trying out his new Desert Eagle, all his unnecessarily ridiculous. Um, I'm pretty guns. sure he calls it a Deagle. <laughs> because he plays vid- he's chronically in video games. Oh. Is is that what you've heard him refer to as? Oh yeah, they used to, people used to call him Deagles on I in video games all the time. I know that. Desert Eagle's too long of a word. I wonder how much of Anthony's gun appreciation came from um, playing video games and just being like, ooh, it's like the one from the game. When I was younger, I used to think guns were cool to the extent of, like, I I thought, I, I looked up what kind of gun I would like the best, and just, I, I don't know what criteria I even, like, based it off of, but I, I just, for some reason, thought... I think it was a bit of pandering to dudes. I was like, I need to know what kind of gun I like. Mm. And so for some reason I was like, yeah, 
I would I wouldn't use an AK-47 because I'm smaller. I'm a smaller person, so I would like an AK-101 because they're more compact. Ooh. I'm just like, like what was I thinking? Like, what is <laughs> like where? <laughs> where did that come from? You just start rattling off stats. I there was definitely a time where okay, there's something about dudes where especially younger dudes but older dudes too there's a specific kind of dude that like you know you're wearing a band t-shirt and they'll come up and do the thing oh oh yeah what are your fa- what are your top five songs Oof. it's like top five guns go and so yeah it's just sort of like so i used to feel like oh i need to like do a little research and i'm pretty sure i did like know some shit just to be like yeah i know some information about it but it's just like i like the new approach especially with band t-shirts where it's like if some dude comes up to you and does the whole spiel of like, oh, you, you know, name name five songs. It's just like, who's Guns N' Roses? I thought it was just like a cool design. Yeah. That's a band? And just like really lean into it and just like, it sound bad. <laughs> <laughs> Ew, why would I listen to that? What, sh- just play me a little bit? Ugh. Ugh. That's fucking awful. Gross. <laughs> That definitely works for older bands anyway, because I don't know if new bands necessarily have logos, but all the old bands, like all the all the classic rock bands, they yeah, all they have... like stuck with logos pretty consistently. Oh yeah, like the Van Halen logo, the Who logo, the Rolling Stones logo, yeah. with even the Beatles logo. But now nowadays nowadays bands are just like, oh here's the logo for this album, here's the logo for this album. Yeah, they change their font up, they change it all up like every time. Yeah, you don't really know if the band has its own font per se yeah it probably like, changes from album to album yeah it, yeah it definitely change just like if you if i just think about like my favorite bands yeah they change from at least album to album yeah so patrice joins in on the conversation and the topic comes back around how they handled the tom phone call this leads to o and a talking about if they care about tom as a person i'll be honest with you i was just thinking about my job Really? Yeah, I don't care. It didn't even occur to me. Honest to God. I just was thinking if he did it live on our show, we would be fired. And I really couldn't live with that. <laughs> I don't. I, only if I you cope, if I you try to cope him into doing it. I have blown his brains out or not. You wouldn't have, I don't know him well enough. I don't think you've been fired if if you if he did it. But maybe if you said M- might have been do it. Well, that's just it. They'd have they'd have listened to every single word leading up to that. If he would have shot himself. And b- because we were joking around uh, to some extent, they would have said, well, perhaps you guys were responsible. You're not professionals. You shouldn't have done this. You should have gotten professional help. You should have, should have, should have, whatever. Well, why wouldn't you but, care? That's weird. I mean, I, 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 I don't, don't know the guy quite, that well either, but uh, that's, a, that's a biggie, man. No, I don't know him well enough. <laughs> I, uh, I just think it's like one of those things where, you know, take him or leave him. <laughs> As far as he's alive, I think, okay, that's good. Better than being dead. But honestly, I don't know. I guess maybe Anthony is a little bit of a sociopath. Um, That could be, yeah. Could be. I wouldn't take that off the table. Tom eventually does end up in studio pretty soon after this. How can you... I mean, I don't know Tom. But if if I were Tom and I heard... This dude say that. Oh, I don't care if you kill yourself. Why the fuck would I even bother coming down there? Yeah, right? I'm like, wow, fuck you, dude. I would yeah. definitely exchange words at the very yeah. least. Like, okay, everyone else seems cool. Opie, Jim, they seem cool. They seriously, like, Jim straight up said, I didn't even think about my job. That never crossed my mind. No, yeah, and you can tell from his reaction. Yeah, no, like, and it, specifically because we talked about it in the last show, Jim, who is someone who dealt with depression and had suicidal thoughts before could relate to Tom and yeah. knew what he himself would have liked to heard. Yeah. So he knew how to apply it. You could tell Opie and Jimmy were... Uh, um, o and A were so detached. Uh, o- Opie did try. I will give him credit. Not to the point where he should get his name in the fucking headline and not even Jim. But, you know, the mm. readers aren't, aren't going to know because Jim's name isn't even in the name of the show. Yeah. But he was like... Hey, uh, let's maybe call you some help. Uh, let's uh, let's try this, maybe. Yeah. He was more uncomfortable and just kind of wanted to, like, let's see what we can do here. Yeah, it seemed like Opie was almost going to have a panic attack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He there, there are a lot of times where, and, I mean, there's plenty of stuff I don't include because there's way too much stuff. If Tom would have done that, it would have kept him up. Like, he would not have been able to live oh, past yeah. that. Like, that would have fucked with him really bad. Yeah. 
And I honestly, yeah, it, it, it probably would have cost them their jobs. Oh, yeah. I would straight up. I'm surprised up. that it didn't anyway. Something that someone did suggest, which is a very good point, that once the gun went off, why didn't anyone dump out? What's because, dump out mean? Um, dump out is when you hit the delay button, and every radio station, television station has a delay button. Oh. To where if you curse, you hit the delay button... It erases the last eight seconds. Okay, so you have leeway. You have leeway. So why didn't you... Yeah. If you heard a gun go off and you don't know if he shot himself, why wouldn't you have hit the dump button? And also, if you you hear him, like, cocking the gun. Yeah, like... Like, both of those instances, those are two great times to dump out. You could dump out. You can throw it a break. There's plenty of things you can do. Yeah, let an... Like, lead into an advertisement. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. You could definitely spin this to an ad, Reed. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah, sure. yeah. If you had been listening live to that, and I was at that, how how did that? How did, did you, why have we not talked about that? How did you react to that? I honestly, compl- I completely forgot it happened. Do you not remember how you felt about it or reacted? No, because when I was I was at work, they were having their conversation. Opie was joking about all the shit, being really awful, and I I was just like, God damn, this is fucking. This is dog shit, man. This is yeah. really bad radio. And then Tom calls in, and I went, "Oh fuck, I remember Tom. Holy shit, I haven't heard him in a really long time." And then he does that. I almost dropped it. I was, I was like, "Oh yeah, Jesus, it's so what? sobering." I had a really hard time focusing on doing anything at that point. I was just like, "I don't remember what happens here." Yeah, <laughs> like, I don't remember if he actually does it or yeah. Like it was gripping. So I wonder so, how you felt when you originally heard it. It, it it is interesting. It's hard to say because we're talking two thousand eight. I was either at home getting ready for school. I was at school in class and maybe didn't hear it live. Oh, okay, so you there heard it the same day though. I did, yeah. Because what the station does is they'll play it live first run. Then there's an hour off. Then they play uh, the Ron and Fez show, and then for the rest of the day. They replay the ONA show, I think, two or three times. Do you think that they would have kept it in if they could have cut it out? I would venture to guess that what I'm hearing is a recording of the replay. If I had to guess. I don't know if people are recording it live or if they're recording the, the replay, but... Because I feel like that's something you would have remembered. Yeah, right? At least when you're re-listening to it and be like, oh, I remember this, because that's such a whoa thing, so I... So I wonder if this is, like, your first time hearing that this happened. It could be. It could easily be. Um, Because it's funny, like, I'll be at work and I'll remember jokes. That's what I'm saying. The way my brain works is, like, like if I'm reading a book or watching a movie and I'm like, I don't remember what happens. And all of a sudden it's like, oh, I remember what happens. Yeah, I might not have ever heard that before. Yeah, it was extremely sobering. And I know for a fact this wasn't a bit. I've heard them talk yeah. about this in hindsight, that, that, that this was a 100% genuine I thing. never even thought that it could have been a bit. This Because that kind of audience member made sense to me. Blackpilled seems to be a fitting demographic. Incels, 100%. Mm-hmm. I like this show because I really think we're unique in the fact that there have been plenty of people I find on YouTube that talk about ONA in hindsight and and... Kind of the same way we're doing it, but they use a lot of problematic language. They still talk like O and A do on the show. Yeah. But as someone who, and I don't want to get, be too dramatic when I say this, but more reformed, like got past all of this. You're detoxing. Yeah, which is the point of the show that we're offering a unique perspective on the whole topic. You as someone who's never heard it. Yeah. Me as someone who heard it but now feels a different way about it. Mm-hmm. That. Yeah, like, I'm not trying to toot our own horn here, but that's why I think our show is so beneficial and helpful, especially for something where no one else is really covering it the same way. Mm -hmm. And I like it for our audience that this is the first time they're hearing a lot of this, like you. Yeah. Because their opinions about it aren't tainted with, yeah, but there are times they're genuinely funny. Yeah. Because I'm going out of my way not to include that stuff. Yeah, because, I mean, like, uh, a broken clock... Right twice a day, you oh, know, yeah. like I'm sure fucking Hitler had some fucking zingers in his day. Um, in an episode I was listening to, they were actually talking about part of a documentary or a book where they were talking about jokes that Hitler told his people. I'm so saying, yeah, he had a sense of humor too. He I'm loves saying, movies. Human people can be terrible too. 
Yeah. Can do terrible things and say terrible things and make consistently terrible choices. But before we turn into a true crime podcast... <gasps> Wait, true crime? Oh, no. Wait, what's the true crime? No, I'm just saying we're talking about humanizing terrible people. That oh. tends to be what those yeah. shows are all about. We Everyone knows Anthony is human. Oh, sure, yeah. So I don't think necessarily we're humanizing him. No. I think that we're painting a realistic picture. Yeah. Because when you're listening to a show that is intentionally a comedy a, a comedy show the point of the show isn't to be dramatic isn't meant to be introspective isn't meant to be reflective of anything like that that these things just come up but that's not the point of the show really yeah. so to put it in that light to turn the attention to those aspects specifically yeah the hints the hints the breadcrumbs yeah the points we should have known maybe and follow it along yeah Especially knowing how he is in 2023 Mm -hmm. to then go back and see, okay, how did we get to where we're at? Yeah. Because now with no one around him really able to give him any sort of pushback like Opie or Jim or anyone like that or Ron, you can see he's just falling further and further. And it seems intentionally that way set up to I don't have to ever be confronted on this yeah i could just say whatever i want because there's points in this episode specifically that talk a lot with uh racism with patrice either on this episode or the next one that when when anthony has no choice but to be confronted by someone with an opposing opinion on very serious topics you can see how heated he gets you can see how angry and passionate he gets about it but when it's just gavin we're just laughing saying the n-word and it's boring yeah it's it isn't compelling at all it's i'd much rather have someone attempting to defend racism and someone opposing that any day of the week yeah because important topics come up Mm -hmm. and in those kind of conversations important things happen you either have people beginning to the seeds begin to be planted toward oh wait yeah that is shitty of me or they dig their heels in it's all up to the individual how they absorb that information like if you come with a defensive stance then you're going to be dig- digging your heels in but if you come with just sort of like a bit of an open mind where it's like yeah you're my friend yeah i'd love to listen to your perspective of it then that's a good opportunity for seeds of like like anti-racism to be planted mm-hmm. if if at all and since patrice is in studio It doesn't take long before the conversation turns to Obama. And today, I guess luckily for us in our podcast, Anthony is in full fear-mongering mode. Oh, jeez. All my money's gonna go to fucking social programs and bullshit that ain't gonna do crap but turn it into another New York City like when Rockefeller was running this shithole. This has nothing to do with, uh... With the color? Yeah. Of course it does. Because he's going to, his top priority is going to be taking care of uh, but, poor uh, black people. Let me ask you a question. Does the president have that much power to just take yes. care of whoever the Obama fuck he wants will, to take care of? Obama will, because guilty white people are going to be more apt to take care of it. Uh, he's not uh, going to do shit for, for black people. Shit. He's not even, he's what? not there. Wait till it, what? Wait till his wife What do you uh, think he's gonna he's gonna appoint black people in yes! the office as white people are sitting there with their fucking watching closely Obama eyes? Of course like, he oh, is. Oh, there you go. A black policeman. Like shut the he's fuck He's gonna Stop. appoint black people in his cabinet. Anthony goes from yeah, Obama's gonna make all these social programs happen and blah blah blah. He's like, how? And Patrice is like, how was he gonna do that? You think he has that much power? He's like, yeah, because then he's gonna he's gonna make all these guilty white people wanna like he's gonna and it's like, so he's really just going to influence people rather than actually do legislative changes or you mean he's actually gonna govern in reflection to the needs of his constituency? Yeah, and and like Whoa. people, white people who possibly already feel guilty about. The disproportionate, like, uh, inequality for black people are going to maybe make more moves to better the world around them? That seems bigger than just the seat of the president. (laughs) And what are guilty white people going to do once they've already voted for him? Yeah. He's in office. What are they going to do now? Well, I mean, like, what I imagine Anthony is saying is that, like, those white people are going to be the change they want to see in the world. Oh. And, like, why is that so... 
Like, don't you want people to be free to do that, Anthony? He doesn't... He has a really weird picture of how things are going to turn out, and they're not based in any reality. What's the picture? I don't know that black people are going to get all the help, white people are going to switch places with black people, I guess. That, well, yeah, that is a, a giant racist ideology. That's the only thing I could honestly think, but as someone who is a wealthy white person like Anthony, what besides being taxed more, which any Democratic president would do that. Yeah. I didn't hear you bitch this much when Clinton was in office. You weren't jumping up and down for joy over eight years of Bush not yeah, being taxed no as comment, much. Yeah. You, yeah, I rarely remember hearing Opie, uh, Anthony talk about Bush nearly as much. Not in a good light or a bad light. Yeah. But now that he's almost out of office, he'll say, oh, yeah, I, don't, I don't like Bush either. But you never really heard him bitch about him. Mm-hmm. So what's the difference? What's the common denominator here? Yeah, exactly. And w- one thing I wanted to point out was Patrice asks, you think he's going to appoint a whole bunch of black people? And Anthony's like, yeah, why wouldn't he? I'm yeah. going to read down Obama's well, black appointees to cabinets in 2008. And I also want to preface this by saying, think about how few black people are already in government at this time compared to how many white people are in government. Yeah, that, that definitely uh, impacts this. Yeah. As Attorney General, Eric Holder was appointed. For Trade Representative, Ron Kirk was appointed. Oh, that's it. That's it. Oh. That's it. Mm. It's just... Uh, he really created a strong battalion there to, you know, overtake... You know, and enslave the white man. Never, really? And then, why can't? And he? then he's gonna say, "All right, we got. We need this fucking fucking God. social program. It's gonna take care of. Uh, it's I gonna take care of low I income housing, which you could say is low income housing. Well, it's for everybody. Because the second you say you mean buildings that poor black people live in, that's racist. <laughs> oh, but you ex- so Anthony acknowledges that black people are disproportionately poor. Yes, but you can't say that. Oh, yeah, yeah, you can't say that. But, like, I was expecting him to say something like, what about the poor white people? He never says anything about poor white people because he doesn't care yeah, about he doesn't, poor white people. He just doesn't. He just doesn't want poor black people to be helped. And it's like, why? Why? Racism. Do you really There's think- no other reason you can point to. There's he- nothing logical. Let's pretend there's a logical reason because... I personally believe that all racism is rooted in what somebody believes is logical. Yeah, I mean, they have to think they're right. Yeah, it isn't when you take in all of the actual information. Okay, logic implies that you have a lot of information about it. Mm. But sometimes people are working within their own frame of logic with lack of information. Mm -hmm. Like, you can see that within, like, science experiments, where it's just like, we, the Earth revolves around the sun, yeah, but we thought the sun revolved around the Earth for the longest time because of the information we had. Yeah. And we were, like, digging our feet in about it. Mm -hmm. So, like, what kernel of supposed... What what it, what misinformation is he basing his logic on? You know? And uh, what I would say, because this comes up a good bit, this hypothetical of the, you can't say X or else people are going to call you racist. Yeah. I seriously think Anthony's brain has just been poisoned as a radio personality over time being told you can't say specific things. Yeah, his... his- uh, bosses who pay him who have to answer to the FCC yep. um, telling him hey don't fuck this up for us yeah so, because even the day I was actually trying to watch an Opie live stream in the morning Opie said something to the effect of last night I went and got Chinese food if you can still say that I've heard you can't say that anymore that you know that actually does make a lot of sense that like because they're so Especially Anthony. He's so self-centered Yeah, that I could totally see him being like, oh, I've been told for years you can't say this, 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 and this. And it's just like, you're really internalizing that as you're the victim. Yeah. And the things you keep saying that they're saying you can't say, you feel that you're being targeted by that group of people that you're talking about. 
Yeah. When it seriously doesn't hurt you at all to not say these specific things. It really doesn't. Certain people love to scream freedom of speech in mm. certain contexts. Yeah, for sure. Anthony, absolutely one of them. And those specific people are often the people trying to use their freedom of speech to incite violence, which mm-hmm. is not covered by freedom of speech. Yeah. They really do just flip and turn themselves into the victim. And this specific thing comes up a lot of Anthony saying, you can't say that black people tend to be poor. It's a generalization, but it is also an acknowledgement of the disproportionate poverty. If you're willing to actually take the step and acknowledge why. Yeah. But they never are. Because it's all about comedy for them. They just want to be like, haha, black people are poor. Yeah. As opposed to, yeah, black people are disproportionately poor. Without the comedy. Mm-hmm. Not funny. But don't forget, Bush had it. Look, it looked at. Uh, wait a minute, wait the fuck a minute. Okay. What's the problem, though? Because I don't want to fucking pay for it. Well, I lived in my fucking car. It, I lived in my car. So you want to pull you yourself up by your bootstrap and you, take care of your own? You, oh my god, he said bootstrap. He loves the bootstraps, He man. loves bootstraps. He loves to wrap that bootstrap around his dick and jerk off about it. He oh loves my to lick god. boots. He loves the bootstraps. He loves boots. He uses every part of the boot. He kisses every part of the boot. He can criticize other poor people because he himself was poor at one point. That is... And, and that boot, the bootstrap mentality, which is what you're, you're poor and you supposedly, on your own volition, pull yourself up by your bootstraps into a place of privilege, which is... These situations never acknowledge what privilege these people do have. Yeah. Like, you can, you can think of, like, the one of the most intersectionally marginalized groups of people, right? And let's say you've got, like, a disabled trans black woman who, you know, they've got everything, all all of society working against them in terms of white supremacy. And, which you, you don't often, because there's so much working against these people, you're not gonna, you so rarely see that very specific bundle of demographics, quote-unquote, pulling themselves up by their bootstraps. Mm. It tends to be poor white men. yeah. And sometimes, sometimes black men in terms of, and I don't want to convolute this by saying that because people who believe in bootstrap mentality will hear that and be like, well, yeah, because blah, blah, blah is not working hard enough. Working hard has nothing to do with bootstrap mentality. Mm. They think it does, though. They just managed to use connections and the privilege they have to get to these positions because more often than not, it is white men. They're going to be able to do it a lot easier than white women, than black men, than black women, than anybody who is more marginalized than them. It's also worth pointing out that the bootstrap thing in itself is impossible. Yeah. The the, the phrase pull yourself up by your bootstraps is a shitty thing because you cannot pull yourself up by your bootstraps. But if you can. Yeah. Whoa. Then I guess you're exceptional. We should stop centering privilege. Mm. Because if you think about... Like, white man, black man, um, getting pulled over by the cops. Is it really a privilege to not get shot by cops? Mm. It's dangerous to be supposing that it's a privilege not to be shot by cops, as opposed to a human right. Would you be surprised that this actually comes up later in the show? Re- well, I'm, no, I'm not surprised at all, because that's <laughs> such a common talking point. Mm-hmm. I think they'll be more willing to talk about it. Yeah. If it's positioned in disadv- disadvantages. Yeah, the moment you bring up privilege. privilege you, you get immediate pushback. Yeah, and it because, makes sense. Because you'll you'll get poor white people saying, I had it shitty my whole life. I never had any privilege. What privileges do I have? And then you can go, okay... What disadvantages have you had? Yeah. Do you have as many disadvantages as a black man? And then, oh, no, I guess not. A lot of times they'll be so much quicker to to agree. They'll be like, no, no, I totally agree that black people are like, they're more likely to be uh, to be shot by cops or targeted by cops and things like that. So, yeah, it was just it was a big eye opener for me. I was like. Once again, still centering white supremacy, thinking that we're not. Yeah. You Fucking feel ass. like you're paying for now. Yep. You feel is something you want to pay for. No, no, I of course not. But it's going to be more. You look at my fucking uh, Why you have quarterly with tax. The, with the I don't want to hire. It's, it's just the nigger programs. You're, the poor Negro programs you're talking about. What about yeah, other yes. programs? Thank you. And he's not going to just do that. 
He's not going to just help black people. He's not going to do that. No, you're right. He's not just going to do He's that. He's going to help everybody. He's going to take my tax breaks that were given to me and take those By away. By who? So it's even Reagan more. 50 Reagan years ago? Reagan and Bush. Daddy Bush, not this Bush. No, this Bush gave tax breaks to fucking... To uh, so uh, rich folks? Not rich, rich folks. People that live in New York City that make $100,000 a year, you tell me, you ask them if they're fucking rich. They're rich or if folks. They're $100,000 a year is rich folks. grand in New York City is not rich. To use a talking point that someone like Anthony would 100% use if the shoe was on the other foot, if you can't afford to live in New York on $100,000, move. Move. Get the fuck out then. Move. Yeah, if you're someone who doesn't think that fucking housing is a human right... Then get the fuck out. Fucking live like instead of living like a like you got a hundred thousand. No one live like a hundred air instead of living like a. No one air. got this fucking hundred thousand dollar a year job by fucking uh, going on welfare. Anthony is bitching about oh nobody nobody uh got to where I am by doing nothing. Yeah, no one got a hundred thousand dollars by welfare program. Implying he did hard work. Yeah, you sit. And you talk all day. Doing what you have numerous times referred to as the easiest job the in the world. The easiest job. And that you'll see that so often. It'll be people that, like, they just like, oh, I'm just in the stratosphere now. And I am just up doing my hoity-toity shit. When I was a tin knocker and I was sweating my ass off in attics making 20-something thousand dollars, that was hard work. In 93, 94... You haven't done that for 14 years. 14. You, that, that, that has nothing to do with your money now. No. Like, you weren't able to save any of that. I, All the money you have mm, now is from radio. Because the implication is this. I didn't get where I got today on welfare. I didn't get where I got today by sitting on my ass. Which is literally what... Because that's the implication when somebody yeah. says welfare. Yeah. As if people on welfare aren't also working extremely hard to survive. When you listen to O&A from the late 90s, only a few years out from Anthony having done construction, when they talk about unions and people going on strike, he has barely anything to say. But you can tell that, let's just say, if people installing air conditioning units in 2008 went on strike or wanted to unionize, this motherfucker would be the first person to call them lazy and not be able to sympathize with what they're going through. Maybe he, he may not have ever been attached mentally. Yeah, it's, that, it's and, hard to say. Yeah, I mean, like, he, he has this phrase, tin knocker, and, like, he, he talked about how terrible of a job it was, and I have no experience in it, and I'm sure it's labor-intensive, but it seems like he never really assimilated with the culture of that job. No, I mean, I've heard, I've heard multiple stories about times he just fucking takes the work van, goes to strip clubs, gets drunk, doesn't even do the jobs he was supposed to do. Yeah, this motherfucker was never married to the job anyway. Yeah. Or fucking social Nobody's programs. Nobody's even they on work welfare anymore. No one's on welfare shit. no more. Welfare doesn't even exist. Wick cards. Whatever the fuck you want to call it's them. It's fucking food, you goddamn gruesome motherfucker. You just help <laughs> some guy no one gives a fuck about not kill himself? Can a nigga get a sandwich? <laughs> Good. Good. Work for the motherfucking fucking sandwich. Asshole. Work Jesus for the sandwich. <laughs> work what the for fuck it. is wrong with you? Work. The argument of you need to work for the things rather than get welfare. Mm -hmm. You need to work for them instead of the government helping you. It always comes from someone who doesn't have to work very hard. This motherfucker went literally from no experience... In radio at all. To sending a music video to, to winning someone. a contest. Yeah. And being able to quit his job and become a radio host. Full time. Full time. For like, yeah, for more than he was making and very soon making considerably more than he was making. People on welfare, on, on the WIC program and SNAP and everything and all of the government assistance. I grew up in that situation. And I grew up with majority of the families in my neighborhood in that situation. All of the people had jobs. The jobs did not pay enough yeah. to give them a living wage. And you hear about it a lot these days. People having to work two or three jobs and still not being able to afford rent. Panhandling, in my opinion, is still a fucking job. Yeah. How, you need to make money. You stand on the fucking corner for hours on end in terrible weather. 
asking, having to approach people Ugh. who could fucking hurt you yeah. or hit you with their cars or call the cops on you mm -hmm. and the cops will arrest you to have money to survive wherever you can survive. Oh, you can't afford fucking shelter with the money you, you've accumulated? Okay, you, you're not going to have shelter, but you can afford food, hopefully. Oh, shit, you can't afford food, but you can afford a 40 to comfort the fact that you don't have any fucking food? Yeah, I fucking get that. Yeah. And so many people like to just assume that none of these things that people are doing who are in poverty have any work to them. Mm. And it all just boils back down to this... So within within the structure of capitalism, if the lower middle class and the lower class don't have something to be afraid of, mm. i.e. poverty, living on the street, living without being able to eat, the homeless population keeps people afraid. Yeah. It keeps people from from quitting it keeps people from unionizing in fear of quitting or fear of getting fired and shit like that it keeps people afraid of pushing back against the shitty slave wage conditions that so many people have to deal with and so when you have that bolstering your lower class workers and your blue collar workers you have to maintain that mentality. And so when you get just high enough to keep oppressing those beneath you, like Anthony, you're, of course, you're going to feel like everybody beneath that is terrible, lazy. But that's not the fucking case. That's just the ideology trying to uphold this capitalistic idea. When it comes to taxes, I've heard Anthony say, quote, you get what you pay for, especially when it comes to schools. But I personally don't believe Anthony can complain about having to pay for social programs that help poor black people then turn around and complain about poor black people taking matters into their own hands. Because he doesn't ever acknowledge what these social programs do. Just vague. He, it's just, oh, these are going to help black people and not me. I don't want to pay for it. But this motherfucker spends all his goddamn time on Twitter. And I, I'm telling y'all, please check his Twitter. He uses his old one that got reinstated, by the oh, way. Oh, yeah. At Compound Boss. He uses that one primarily now. Not the one he paid $8 a month for a blue check mark for that I don't think has it anymore because it, you only get a month's worth of the check. Yeah. Um, so he doesn't use Relocation Boss anymore. He uses the old Compound Boss. He laughs about, you know, people from Twitter getting laid off and all this. But if Twitter actually went away, it would affect this motherfucker so goddamn much. Yeah. Because of how much he's like, what is his therapy? Yeah. It's seriously the only time he gets to vent outside of his show is to do this. It would it would ruin him. It would wreck him. Everything you complain about would go away with the help of social programs. Yeah. That you are not willing to pay for. Yeah. Because you pay enough then you can't say you get what you pay for mm -mm. if you want more fucker pay more if you want just global harm reduction give people their basic necessities housing food i would also include drugs in this i would a safe method of using drugs mental health programs places that help you like if we're working within the certain the current framework of like jobs and shit then you need to be able to train people how to get jobs and like give them schooling that prepares them for these kind of things as opposed to just this bullshit of just like bare minimum for everybody and if you can pull yourself up by your bootstraps then you're one better than everybody and two richer than everybody everyone else just you you it keeps everybody else in line it just maintains the stratification of society it's like somebody, just because they need help doesn't mean they're begging for help. It means uh, you, you need some fucking help from, this co from your country. This country, I help this country will ask you to go to war and ask you to do a lot of things for it. it, will, it if you say anything wrong about it, you're not a fucking American. All this shit this country, pressure this country places on you, and it can't help a motherfucker get a, a I got sandwich? A, I got a quarterly tax bill on my counter right now that is due on the 15th. You fucking look at that thing and tell me I'm not doing enough. Go I don't fuck yourself. I don't know what I'm you doing make. Plenty, motherfucker. I don't know what you this just supports my argument that he is more wealthy than a lot of people in this situ in this case. Yes. However, there are people who are a lot more wealthy than he is. Yeah. Maybe tax reform should be pushing on those rich people a bit more. People in his situation, there are a lot more of them. Mm-hmm. 
Like, he's the... If the 1% is 1%. Yeah. He's like the... 15 percent yeah you know like the 15 percent underneath that one percent anthony is someone who worries that he is in the one percent yeah well see yeah because then he's like a target yeah he, he loves can be, that yeah he wants to be the victim yeah um to be. so like in this situation it just sort of feels like that's another way to keep people fighting because you have because you if you have like all three super duper rich people fighting no one's gonna give a shit they're gonna be like why should we sympathize with you but these people way more people way larger numbers so in that way they are more vocal Mm. and they can influence the people around them and then they can they can vote in such a way that pushes for less taxing if only the super rich people were pushed to give a shit about um raise a raise in taxes who would care no that the vote wouldn't really get anywhere yeah but if you have like that chunk of the upper middle class, mm-hmm. then it's going to have way more impact. So th- I think part, I wouldn't be surprised if part of like the upholding of all of this system is just make sure we include when the, we, when we have the tax brackets, make sure we include them. Cause that's a giant group of people that's going to be infected now and yeah. they're going to be pissed. So Man, I'm doing plenty. I don't know if that's, if I should be caring about the fact that you want to buy another Shelby. I should be allowed to. I've made it, some of myself. Thou fuck me. Uh, no, fuck not, me in no, my ass. Not fuck I made you. some of myself. <laughs> no, I achieved you. I achieved what's but, called the American minute, dream. Fuck me in my ass now. Not everybody. Ugh. That is such an illusion. The American dream. I made my. I made something of myself. Ugh. I achieved the American dream. What is that? What is the American dream to you, Anthony? I hate that. And I said this in the comment that I think it was Chenna. Shout out to Chenna was talking about, they were wondering how much generational trauma has to do with Anthony's trauma that he's dealing with, how much of the things he's saying are repeating things his dad says. But because his dad was someone who you can tell never talked about his feelings. Grew up in the Great Depression. Grew up in the Great Depression, all this stuff. You were never going to know what he was like, what he had to grow up with. Anthony probably has no idea because they never talked about it. Mm -hmm. So... He's not going to know if he's repeating habits or just like, yeah. I'm sure he knows if he's repeating things as so, someone like his dad has said. And I'm sure that's the yeah, case. Yeah, little kernels. And I don't know what the fuck his dad would know about the goddamn American dream. Fucking beating the shit out of his kid for stealing quarters to fucking survive to get ice cream sandwiches. Yeah, like we fear not just being poor mm-hmm. in terms of how the government treats the poor, the poor people, but we fear the moral implication of being poor. Mm. What is that? Because in America, in some countries, being poor just means, oh, wow, gosh, something must have happened. Let's help you. Mm -hmm. In America, being poor means, wow, you must be lazy. Yeah. And lazy? Totally not a made-up concept. Lazy means bad. Lazy means you just you're greedy not just lazy but you're greedy you don't want to do anything and also you want everything handed to you everything also you're mean and probably do drugs which we say is bad and also you're probably violent you know just naturally like there's nothing there's no external forces making that happen so poor people equal bad therefore always avoid being poor because the government will treat you like a bad person. Who d- doesn't achieve the level that you achieve yeah. is a beggar or a welfare. I'm not saying they are. But and I'm I doing you, my share. I don't want to do more. can you fucking please add... I don't want to do more. Can you please add poor white folks to it, too? Because you get the insinuation that this is some old black shit. There's w- White people are in the same boat. And that's what I don't like is that this shit is really not a black and white thing. It's 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 black econo- people make it's, it black and white thing. Econo- well, because they do. They do. I wonder it's why. Maybe whining. it's something about the disproportionate aspect. Maybe, uh, maybe that's part of it. Yeah. Opie tells Anthony that he's about to be outnumbered as guest D. L. Hughley enters the studio. But it more or less becomes a debate between Patrice and D. L. With Anthony only chiming in racist bullshit every so often. Patrice admits he is voting for Obama because he is black. He doesn't care what his stances or planned policies are. He believes black people have to vote for him. 
DL doesn't agree. He doesn't like any politician and says that he would vote for McCain if he thought McCain was a better candidate. Anthony decides it's been long enough without a white person butting into the conversation and spouts off more paranoid garbage. Black president, all bets are going to be off. And this is Whitey's but, but point of view. Every, every, every white guy is going to say now, <laughs> well, shit, there's a black fucking president. Shut the fuck so, up. Shut yeah. the fuck up. Hey, hey. No shit. You I'm not shitting you. Yeah. Yeah. This, motherfucker, <laughs> this motherfucker got to the presidency of the United right. States. So can you. All bets are off. Right. Go fuck yourself. Right. Once again, bootstrap mentality. Yep. Um, and that's what I was sort of pointing out earlier, where, like, yeah, some black men can pull themselves up by their bootstraps in, with a shitty phrase, but people like to ignore the fact. It, it just comes back down to, like, black exceptionality. Yeah. And where it's like, oh, look at this black person. Mm. Wow. When we lump black people and people of color into lower class just like assuming the assumption that all black people and people of color are lower class or something no matter how rich they are it it just sort of helps reinforce that oh they're just black people they're just people of color like mm, they're not white people versus but look at this one ooh you could you could do that too if you wanted to as if being the president isn't <laughs> the expectation of Pull yourself by your bootstraps and become president. Then we'll talk. Versus the expectations for a white person where it's just like, make some money. And just make a little bit of money, you know? And seriously, the work hard one day and someday you'll be president is such a gone, of such a bygone era mentality that Anthony cannot get the fuck out of. It's funny to me that, and I guess it's a coincidence that Anthony always falls back on doing impressions of like voiceover people from the 50s and that all he ever watches are sitcoms from the 60s and 70s when that is where his mentality is stuck. Yeah, it's so weird. It's like he's stuck being like a 12 year old, but also a 12 year old from the 50s. Yeah. That's what well, Whitey's pick, gonna pick say. Your, pick your bootstraps up. Look, yes, not, pick yourself up by your bootstraps. You're gonna Go say, to school, whatever the fuck it takes. Do whatever it takes. Except. <laughs> take help from the government yeah do whatever it takes but don't ask for help i don't care what if, if you're lazy or whatever i was just in edmonton alberta they have the best economy whoa, whoa, in the whoa, 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 motherfucker. why wasn't there an interruption there jack because i'm waiting to talk about how senator uh kennedy uh and his you brain hate this tumor, fucking health care and thing. If, it, if 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 we had socialized medicine like senator kennedy wanted he would still have that fucking orange in his head Why because it would, because you don't fucking step up to a hospital get the best doctor and say hey take the tumor out of my head you wait on a fucking list you sit and wait for a fucking doctor you're not getting the best doctor so you should not you should get fucking you should medicine. get but he's a rich motherfucker and he was able to get whatever he wants <laughs> but and, but, but and that's america is, you're not why the fuck did this country turn into something, something where everyone's entitled to something let me ask you something. instead of working let me ask you up to him because we working to up to getting the brain tumor removed from things. your head <laughs> what is what the fuck is wrong with you spoiled we got exactly we got he is a spoiled bastard we have to do two things if we're not going to be the America we espouse, then let's not be, like we let's be Russian. Let's be as shitty as we think we as we say that. But we're gonna put God in our constitution and we're gonna act like we're a judo Christian society and we're a Judeo Christian society and we are a nation of laws and rules and we're a nation of human rights and dignity. A human being should never die because it is po they're poor. I don't give a fuck why they are. Anyone can go into the fucking hospital. You go to the emergency room. Some people are going to get <sighs> shitty care. Anthony, Some people are going to get good care. Hold did on. Did you just hear this, that point? I did. Did you used to be poor? Yes. Do you think you should have been dead if you couldn't afford to live? If You know something? If I was fucked up when I was poor, I, then I'd be dead. That's the fucking country. No, no, no. That's not, I asked you, do you but, think you what? should be dead because you couldn't afford to be alive? Uh... No, but in certain circumstances, that's just the way we this are fucking a country is. That it, you think the country's working the way it should be, or it isn't? It doesn't matter. It's how it's going, and that's it. Because you you hear so much fucking... I don't know if it's hope from D.L. Hughley. It's not, not hope. It's optimism, I feel. Yeah. Because, yeah, the fucking country was founded on these Judeo-Christian ideologies of, like, you know, help your neighbor. 
mm-hmm. fucking be there for each other and like try, treat treat everyone as you'd like to be treated. I love that because DL is a guest. Anthony doesn't push back on him. He just sort or, of ignores it or yell at him as much as he does Patrice. Yeah, because his priest, uh, Patrice has been coming in for years. He's just another comedian that comes in. He's not necessarily a guest. Yeah, but DL is very rare when he comes in. So. Yeah, and this was. What year is this? This is 2008. 2008, okay, yeah. Oh, I mean, like, he's a he's still a big comedian. Oh, yeah, he's definitely yeah. a big name. So ultimately, what you hear is just, like, breathing, seething, and yeah. just let him get what he needs to say out. I'm going to wait for Patrice to say something. Then I'm going to yell. I'm going to scream because I'm so mad that I'm getting fucking beat down by two of y'all, mm-hmm. and I, cu- I can only fight back against Patrice. Yeah. So I'm gonna give all the anger that I have built up against DL, and Patrice is gonna get it twofold. Because it deals, it creates such a great point. Yeah. Like, it's like, okay, okay, what our country is? Our country was founded on Judeo-Christian beliefs. And now, you can see it now. Um, if you if you come with the idea ideology that that's what our country was founded on, and hmm, why is Christianity seem, seeming so different now? Yeah, it's almost as if the the structure of our government is sort of bastardizing what Christianity used to be. Why is it being weaponized? Yeah, it's almost as if people are like, it's it's like American Christianity. It's like a special sect of American Christianity. You're poor, rich trash. Like you're, you're rich, hysterical, Patrice. You're just a piece you're of garbage, the- but you're a millionaire. Let, let me just, let me just, let me just say this. <laughs> Fucking bastard. When did this country? become the country where everyone's entitled to the same fucking thing. There are poor no, people, different. there are rich people. Hold on, different. hold on. There are poor people and there are rich people in this country. It's what this country's based on. If you're lucky and you make something yourself, you have uh, <laughs> some skill, whatever the fuck it is, listen to you laugh. No, I'm this laughing. is what America is no, made I'm for. Laughing some at... people fall on their ass and fucking get nowhere. I'm laughing and others, because there's a lot of ass falling that? people that That's are listening to That's what this whole show fucking right country <laughs> was based on. No, the country was built. It based. wasn't based to come here because we're going to no. give you what the fuck uh, you you want. This country was based. Wasn't a guarantee. On, 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 on exploiting. Uh, uh, it really was. It was based on black labor. First it was black labor. Free black then it was labor. Italians. Then it was Africans. Now it's the Mexicans. It's that new term. They the mm-hmm. new niggas. I just love how he's like. That's what this country. D- not DL, but Anthony, Anthony talking about how. Th- oh, that's what the country was based off of. The country was based off of people fleeing other and, countries. And oppression. Because of oppression. Yeah. Presumably because they probably couldn't get jobs and equal treatment yeah. in the countries they were in. So they fled to a place where they could build that together to prevent people from not having the things they need and the opportunities they wanted. They wanted more opportunities, not certain people. Like, sure. People who came over here were more privileged in terms of the people who willingly came over here. Anthony is one of these fucked up fuckers who is going to critique black people who come from a lineage of being kidnapped from Africa against their will, trying to make the best of a, of a system that is inherently built and stacked up against them. And at the same time, have the fucking nerve to criticize people in Africa. Like, you cannot win as a black person in Anthony's eyes. Well, yeah, and, and there's just, there's also that false narrative that people in Africa are in a third world country. If you're over here and you're trying your best, or, you're, or even if you're struggling, he's going to point and laugh at you. Mm-hmm. If you stay over there and do your best with what you have and fail, he's still going to point and laugh at you. Well, that's the, yeah, that's the thing. It's, it's the videos I've seen him and Gavin look at people who are, like, trying to build aircrafts or the one video of people in Africa or some someplace, I'm not exactly sure, trying to build a bridge and it collapses. Mm-hmm. Like, all these things like, haha, wow, isn't it so funny that they either don't have the resources or don't have the know-how of uh, infrastructure yeah. or architecture? How would they? How do you expect them to? When yeah. they wouldn't be able to learn from what's going on if it's in a totally different country in a totally different part of the world. And and it's and it also totally disregards the role that America plays yeah. in those countries, especially when it comes to like sucking them all dry of resources. Yeah, or going over there and planting what your vision of what 
a, you know a first world country is and then you then you leave you yeah. build something unsustainable in a, in, a, in a country and think wow this is going to help y'all so much because this is a reflection of america and then you fucking leave and then yeah. they aren't able to sustain it it falls apart and then you point and laugh because you weren't able to help the videos that you see of people fighting in restaurants that he points and laughs are like, wow, black people, y'all, y'all just, all you do is fight each other in restaurants. All you do, you have no idea what caused that. No the idea. The video only picks up the fight and none of the context. Mm-hmm. Same thing with the bridge. Yeah. He doesn't give a fuck what the context is, what the buildup is. All of it is what I can see. Mm-hmm. And That's enough for him. What I can see in terms of reinforcing my uh, my bias. What I can use. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Because this motherfucker never shows videos of white people beating up each other, regardless of what the context is. Mm-hmm. It's always black people. Every single time. This episode is one of the more interesting ones when it comes to discussions about the election, because Anthony wouldn't normally get this much pushback, and DL is there to provide pushback to Patrice from another point of view. And Opie stays quiet for the most part, which is ultimately for the best. DL asks Anthony a question here, and his response genuinely surprised me. Never vote for Obama. No. And and you know something? And I'd be honest, (laughs) like Patrice doesn't think I'd be, I don't like his politics. I don't like that he's too he's too fucking liberal for me. And I don't see and I don't like I don't like McCain. But yeah, I, don't, but I don't like McCain either. He's too he's a little too. But I would far never vote right for somebody I didn't like. I, what were McCain's what was McCain's platform? I don't remember. Honestly, if I had to guess, it would seem pretty liberal con, uh, compared yeah, to modern day right wing politics. Yeah, and that, I mean, I feel like that's sort of why I was almost tempted to vote for him. It probably didn't seem too outrageous at the time. I never hear Anthony complain about specifics when it comes to McCain, and he doesn't elaborate on what he considers too far right. In the end, it doesn't matter to Anthony, since he is sure that New York is a lock for Obama anyway, and it would be a waste of his time to vote for McCain, which is both frustrating and convenient for a guy who doesn't really care for responsibilities. Pisswasser! So we move on to the Anthony portion of the show. I don't think we talk about politics for so at least a course. little bit. What's that? Second course. Yes. The pasta we course. To, ooh. That is, yeah, that is appropriate. After a weekend with Jill and babysitting Keith the cop's kids, they get stopped by a cop for reckless speeding. Anne admits to having been pulled over for speeding at least 10 times so far this year. Jesus. Which would get the normal person's license revoked. The cop doesn't give Anthony a ticket this time, but does confiscate his collection of PBA cards. This sucks, but listeners make sure to send him plenty enough to make up for it. What's a PBA card? Police oh, that's Brotherhood right. Association. I forget exactly what it stands for, but if you're a friend of the police or family of the police, they give you a card that you could flash to a cop and get out of trouble. A cop was pulled over the side of the road, having pulled somebody over. Anthony figures, well, this is a free pass. I can speed past this cop because he's not going to catch up to me because he's already busy with somebody else. Uh, so I can just go 88 past him and he's not going to stop me. He catches up with him and he stops him. So he's in the car with Jill. Jill's trying to do her magic, calling a police officer she knows, trying to see if she can get an in, trying to see if they can talk to each other on the phone. Holy shit. Anthony realizes, hey, I've got a fuck ton of these cards. I'm just going to show him all my cards, see if this does anything. All of them. All of them. He goes back to the car, thinks about it, comes back and says, if I ever catch you again, I'm writing you up for everything. And by the way, I'm keeping these. And he keeps his cards. So he doesn't like revoke them. It's like an informal, like, I mean, it, you're fucking it up for some people. It doesn't mean anything. It's not an official but binding it does, thing. But m- it does mean a lot. It's just not legally. No, it's meaning. not a legal thing. It just means a lot to cops, I guess. So yeah, it's not, a, it's not revoking. He just confiscates them like a teacher would. And just throws them away. See... I don't drive, right? But if I'm in a car yeah. and I worry that someone's going to get pulled over, the driver's going to get pulled over, I have things in my head, fail safes in my head, as someone of privilege to, well, someone who isn't going to get shot yeah. or um, probably going to be able to get off the hook. I'm like, like if there are drugs in the car, right? And I'm the most, like, if I'm like the whitest person there, then I'm going to be like, give me the drugs. I'll hold the drugs. Yeah. Um, If it's like, oh, we're going to get pulled over and like, you know, I'm not driving. I'm going to be like, okay, I have diarrhea right Mm. now. That's the story. I have diarrhea. You know, like do some hard work. Come up with something better than just a fucking card. Yeah. It's like, oh, this has worked before. 
I've been pulled over 10 fucking times this year. Here are my Yu-Gi-Oh cards. And Opie was seriously like, oh, well, then you must have had your license taken away because if that happens to anybody else, they would, you know, they wouldn't be able to drive. But if you're white and you're Anthony and you're friends with a lot of and cops, you're friends with cops, you can get away with this shit. It's an interesting story, an interesting glimpse into into another special kind of privilege he has. So this happened on a Sunday, the weekend, um, the day after him and Jill take Keith's kids to Dave and Buster's. So they've had an action-packed weekend. I wonder if there were kids in the car. Not on Sunday. They say no. He said he would never put Keith's kids in danger in the car. So. Why not? Well, because Keith is like the only friend he has, and he's gonna not he's not gonna put his kids in danger. Who cares? His kids are poor. We don't know about that. They're the, the fucking kids. Cops are, they're kids. kids. Kids don't have money. Well, the dad probably does. He's he's, kid, a, he's a retired cop. Kids, kids, kids. Money isn't parent money. He has kids are poor. He has the money Anthony pays him to do his laundry. Kids may may as well be on the street. <laughs> so we're talking about Anthony. We're talking about their weekend and uh, and who's against kids and and, and being married. Yeah. Those two things will happen. Will happen. You really think so? Will happen. Rapido. <laughs> Jesus. It's, yeah, it's going to happen in well, the next couple of months. I, I think it's going to be sooner. Very fast. I don't think anyone's going to be surprised around here, but maybe the listeners will be extremely surprised. But this is... Yeah. This is... Uh, this is... That's uh, what everyone says when they see us together. It's it's not even a doubt in my mind. This is understand. the real Anthony coming out. I, I always said that you'd be a great father. I always said you would be great with kids. I always said you would you uh, would be very, very happy in a, in a loving uh, uh, marriage. I need to know if he's telling the truth there or if he's bullshitting for the for the show. Yeah. What would make you think that? <laughs> what has Anthony done, said, what has he shown you of himself over the past 14 years that would make you think he would make a, a suitable, responsible father also, who likes kids? Also, what wh how did you how do you define good dad? What did you grow up with? What's your baseline? What's your bar? Opie, by all accounts, seems to have had a pretty normal upbringing and a okay. loving dad who supported him and played with him a lot. Okay. A lot different than Anthony's. Hmm. Pretty big 180 there. Maybe that's just him saying it. Because, you know, sometimes people just say things to be nice. Uh, that's what I'm thinking. I think you'd be a great dad. It's like, I have, I have no fucking idea. That's got to be it. <sighs> That's all I'm saying. You don't even have to comment. I don't want to put any pressure on you, but I, I'm seeing things, my friend. No We're pressure. going from babysitting to uh, to marriage and kids here. No pressure. So you How soon after yeah. that comment did they break up? A couple months. I don't want to spoil anything, but yeah, they, head. they've got a couple months. Yeah. He, you know he has commitment issues. I have been thinking that, that them saying this so much has played a part in it. And when they say no pressure, it absolutely is applying pressure. I think, uh, uh, Ant, you went slow down. You went from being single to extremely in love, saying I love you yeah, after you the second date or whatever it was. I was maybe the third. All right, well, you this thing is moving fast. You say I love you? Oh, we my God. We both did. That's Wait, old no, news don't by put, now. Don't, don't throw her into it. I'm yeah. just asking you. Do you say I love you? Why wouldn't I? So you you really you love her? I'm in love. I'm in love. I'm defiantly in love. In the face of adversity, I'm in love. It doesn't even sound like defiance to me though. It sounds like their relationship to me feels like a beard. Because it feels like a PR move. Um, so it is a publicity stunt. Yeah, because like earlier it's like, what are they selling? And it's like the only thing they could be selling is a, like, rebranding. And it's really Weird. funny that outside of this, Anthony hasn't changed at all. Yeah. It's worth noting. He's but, more racist than ever. But his his reception, ah, people are receiving him differently now. Oh, yeah. She's shining this turd up. That is true. Yeah. Dressing him up in suits, bringing him to charity yeah. events. You really love her. <laughs> you really love her. Really. Really. <laughs> Like love, love. Wow, Bobby! What the hell is your problem? Bobby yeah, doesn't understand. I don't Bobby's I Bobby's married and still hasn't told his wife he loves her. <laughs> <laughs> it's not that. It's just that. It's just that. You know, I love you. He's it's getting just, close to saying I love you now that they've been married a while. He's almost there. <laughs> I, I just don't believe. I don't believe. <laughs> Why are you holding hands with a kid? This is not you. That's All I can think is that it's fulfilling fantasies for him. 
I mean, he had sexually. A fan- yeah, he's he'd been fantasizing and looking at Jill for uh, for about a year. So then, yeah, it's like, ooh, it's a girl I've always wanted, or at least wanted for the last year. And he's also sort of semi playing house. He, yeah, occasionally, which I don't maybe, know if he wants that. Maybe that's but he is. part of the fantasy. Because I feel like with that, if in your head you're like, this isn't going to end up as anything, then you've already set that limit for yourself, and then you're like, yeah, I'll play house. That's sort of that sounds sort of fun, you know. Put the kids to bed and be like, yeah, you know, we're sort of playing that fantasy because I'll never have this. So it's fantasy. Yeah, that's all I can imagine is that like because he's lying. He when he says I'm in love, that tone is knowing she's listening. It's oh, knowing yeah. she can listen. Why do you think they've been together for this long? I think it's a month and change at this point. And every time someone comes in studio, they do not believe it. No one believes this. How long were they together for the... About like three or so months total. I thought it was a year. He's just getting that nut. An interesting thing to note about 2008 FM radio is that ONA go on a tirade complaining about a guy down the hall dumping out of the word duty while they routinely say the R word on a fairly regular basis with no issue. Rules on gay slurs are inconsistent, but duty and poop seem to be hard nose in certain contexts. It's interesting. Mm -hmm. And speaking of slurs, Anthony gives us a glimpse into an evening he spent with his mom, stepdad, aunt, and uncle, and it's not surprising in the least. Last night, Uh went out to, uh, you know, no, I went out east uh, to mom's house, mom and Sal, and uh, my Aunt Fran and Uncle Tony come over. Ain't seen them in a while. Um, And wow. This Aunt Tony? Aunt Tony? (laughs) I mean, Uncle, Uncle Tony, Tony, sorry. No. Uncle no disrespect. Tony. Uncle Tony. No. Uncle Tony's not mobbed up. Neither is Aunt Fran. But, uh, boy, listening to some of their take on Obama was, uh, boy, it brought me right back <coughs> to uh, why I have some of the ideology that I have today. Really? <laughs> in, right in the gutter stuff? In real, raw, uncensored form. Wow. Is it gutter stuff or is it like... No, gutter? it's stuff you can't possibly say That's what I mean. in this century. <laughs> Where, where's the Obama thing that we didn't It's play? old school Italian. Um, he just docks oh. them. You're saying their first names and that they're your mother's siblings. Oh, yeah, yeah, so yeah. So like all someone would have to know is your mother's last name, maiden name, and figure out, like, well, I guess... I guess it would be a little difficult in the 2000s. Uh, yeah, I was going to say, you probably didn't think about that, because he straight up did say the name of Keith the Cop's two daughters, too. And if you know Keith's last name, you know their names. Yeah. That's very unthoughtful. Well, his last name isn't Cop? The Cop. His middle name's The. Keith T. Cop. Yeah. <laughs> Thoughts on uh, the perhaps there being the first black president ever. Wow. Oh, yeah. Oh, that word was flying. Along with some Italian versions of the word. Did, did you make... It's always fun. What, hmm? what, like, what Italian? What do you mean? You know what I mean. Oh. Did you, did, you, <laughs> did, you feel, did you feel uncomfortable? Not at all. They're my family. But, you know. Hey, if you can't, if you can't discuss stuff open and freely in your own house, no matter how politically incorrect or offensive it is, then there's a problem. I find it funny that you have to be able to discuss politically incorrect stuff. Not or it's a problem. Them, not push them back on it or anything. No, no, no. Don't challenge them. No. Don't, 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 don't be liberal about it. No. Don't, like, talk about how maybe we should reform these kind of ideas mm-hmm. or anything. That's fucked up. Get the fuck out of my house. Yeah, yeah. But if you can't talk, if you can't say a bunch of slurs about the president-to-be, then you got a problem. So, I, you know, I gave a listen. It brought me right back to where I used to, you know, go over there and listen to them uh, discuss... Uh, uh, those people all the time, <laughs> because that's pretty much what they say. <laughs> no, uh, all I'm trying to say is, wow, my family's racist. <laughs> wow. That's a great example of somebody who is racist in a in a lesser way, trying to be like, oh, my fa- you should see my family. It's like, you think it makes anything better? I just sat there and listened. I yeah. doesn't say that he was joined I off- in. Was I offended? No. No. Was I uncomfortable? No. No. No, but oh boy, oh boy, you should have been there. I've made this an unwritten rule that the clips I share on the show are purely along the lines of research and not to bog things down with things I find funny. 
But I wanted to share this reoccurring bit Opie does because it genuinely gets me every time. Would you I, have voted for Hillary if she... If she no. Yuck. No. Oh, she sucks. Yuck. Dude, I, I, it's the same crap. Have you ever voted? Uh, no. Ah! <laughs> Is that a ringtone? Hopi's phone in the back of the room will go off, and whenever it goes off, ah! He just screams, okay. He just screams. That sounds like something I would do. It genuinely, every time he does it, I fucking have to. You can to. tell that he, like, turns and does it. <laughs> you can sense where he has, he's not doing it right into the mic. Loaded. Uh, no. Ah! Yeah. <laughs> yep. That 100 is my goddamn shit. Oh, I hate it. I hate that it fucking gets me, but it does. You hate. Yeah, this th that joke's pretty problematic. <laughs> that bit is... Does it make me uncomfortable? No. No. Uh, longtime friend Jay Moore calls in, and they get to talking about sex and condoms, which gives Anthony the excuse to brag about the old condom trick again. Oh, my God. You know the one. We've heard about it. But today, we get to add another abuse tactic to his repertoire. <gasps> Gaslighting! <gasps> you know, I, I remember when my, the wife wanted to get fucking pregnant. Holy Jesus Christ, was that a fucking... I used to fake coming inside her. <laughs> no shit. Are you serious? I went like, oh, 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 God, oh, that was so good. Pull out. She'd be like, wow, there isn't really a lot. I went, like, yeah, I jammed it real fucking deep. <laughs> Don't worry, it's in there. They're swimming up the fallopian tubes right now. I made sure I that's hit the, the spot. Dice, that's how the dice impression got stuck. I'm Anthony faking. Hey. Uh, yeah, that's what I would do. I'd put on my dice f face and uh, make my dice fuck face noises. You really faked, hey. you really faked coming? Oh, she fuck wanted to yeah. Have a kid? Oh. Yeah, she wanted to have a kid, so I would... I would Fake so coming and she, then jerk off in the bathroom. So what would she say month and, after month? And, and leave off? that precious fucking seed in the toilet. What, what would she say <laughs> month after month when it wasn't happening? Uh, well, uh, just, just decided that we should go to a fertility clinic. Did you? Yeah. And uh, the guy uh, took a sample of me and fucking motility or mobility, whatever the fuck it's called, and and count and and shape and everything was perfect. <laughs> and uh, for some reason. Nah, we just weren't getting pregnant. So they blamed it on her? Ah. <laughs> Oops. Again, more just healthy dynamic. Oh, yeah. We don't always... just end the relationship or communicate that you don't want kids. No. We often speculate whether or not Jen was abusive in any way. We can chalk it up and 100% say he was, though. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, if it didn't go both ways, it mm -hmm. at very least. I haven't mentioned it up to this point, but Anthony spends most of the show these days on pal talk. What, like pal from Arthur? The dog? The dog from the cartoon Arthur on PBS? Oh! The way you said Arthur, or all... What did, did you I say? Did I say Arthur weird? I think, I think you did. It didn't register to hey, me. Say, t uh, comment below if you thought I said Arthur weird. <laughs> I also didn't know his dog's name was Pal, so I didn't know that. Excuse me? You don't remember Pal's Big Adventure? Where he runs around the backyard and then poops at the end? I think I've heard about that, but I've, I've never seen it myself. A pal, a pal is best friend, Otto. Otto. Um, they use Pal Talk to show listeners what's going on in studio. It's like a webcam thing. Um, it's cam. But it's mostly Camera. used for listeners to get online and get naked for other people who are watching. Oh, so... It, oh, okay. So it is like... But you don't get paid, so it's just like Omegle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They have a webcam on in the studio, so you can see what guests they have, and that broadcasts everyone watching. They, in turn, will sometimes just get naked, and yeah, that's Was honestly... Is that legal? I don't know. Was there... Okay. Um, so yeah, they, they get naked for each other and anyone who's watching, namely Anthony. He honestly spends most of his show... There are really long stretches of shows where you just don't hear this motherfucker say anything, and it's because he's watching Pal Talk. You know, sometimes you'll see somebody who is really hot, and you'll just sort of like, in you know, the, the, funny, the funny phrase is just like, oh my fucking God, I'm gay. When I see somebody who's like really unattractive, like Anthony, <laughs> I get the same thing, where I'm like, I'm so fucking gay. Where it's just like, that is, he is, because how can... I personally cannot relate to finding him attractive enough to want to get naked in front of him, much less, like, sleep with him or well, marry him. Well, the next thing I say is really going to disgust you. Uh, he would use Pal Talk as a means of hooking up with fans when his girlfriend Melinda left him. 
So that's another thing he's doing during the show. Just So I hope that at some point the people had to click that they were 18 at, you know, at very least. Or that he or Keith at least carred him at some point. You think Keith was involved? You think Keith was, like, at the bedroom door and with, like, the bouncer? He's definitely an accomplice. Oh um, an here, accomplice. comedian Bob Kelly. That, that, that's who we've been hearing occasionally. Sometimes I didn't formally introduce him, you know, formally of Torgasm. Bob Kelly. Okay, yeah. He makes a seemingly innocent comment about a woman Anthony is currently watching, and things get weird fast. Oh. That girl that you always have up there, that you have a couple people you always have up Yeah. I, for a second, I thought she was my cousin. That, that would be disturbing if all this time Your I... cousin? My family. Mm. That you're staring at every day. <laughs> Might be. If you, got a cousin, if you had a cousin like that and didn't have sex with your cousin, you'd be an asshole. Well, fuck your cousin? Yeah. You can't fuck your cousin. You can absolutely fuck your cousin not if she's hot. Not a first cousin, not a first. Yes, yes. No, you can't. Yes. That's fucking my uncle's something. Who Thank cares? Thank you, Bobby. Who cares? You can't fuck. What's the difference? What's the difference? You can't if, if, the, if she's hot and you don't see her all the time. I'm not talking about a cousin that lives like fucking next door that you grew up with and, and your family's all together. Occasionally, like, a cousin shows up and she's fucking six years old and the next time you see her, she's fucking, like, 16 and you're 16. Get the fuck out of here. You're uh, fucking. What about 30? What about 37? Right now, that's weird. That's weird. Because that's, like, old and lonely kind of cousin thing. What if thing. it was, like, she was, like, 25? I'm talking kids where, where you're fucking, you know, the hormones are going anywhere between, like, 16 and 25. So Anthony absolutely fucked a cousin, right? Like, that's all I got from that, is that he absolutely did at some point, right? I love all the qualifiers. The, yeah, Here's that, the that's age what makes range that, that it's normal, and you, you can't see them all the time. It has to be one you don't if, see often. If they live next door, no, that's no. weird. If you see them every so often, then it's okay. If they're 37, no, that's weird, but they're, they're too old and they're lonely and you shouldn't be fucking people that old. But if you're 16 and they're 16, and you don't see them all that often, and they don't live and right next hot. door... And they're hot. You'd be an asshole not to have sex with them. That, I, I've never because because I thought my cousins were cute. Mm. Um, I was like I had I had like be, and I also didn't have much family, so I sort of clung to any family I had. Yeah. And so I was just like, oh, I have a picture of my cousins in my wallet because they're my family, and like, at no point was I like sexually attracted to them. Not as if that necessarily makes you a bad person, mm. but, like, I especially would never, like, pursue them in any way. Mm. So I can't relate to this. Yeah. Like, I've never thought that much about <laughs> cousins. Anthony seems to have a, what? a great deal. Has he ever talked about cousins? His cousins? Not that I know of. So he doesn't see them that often. They don't live next door, then. Oh. Mm. His cousins are probably racist. Oh, they absolutely if are. If you think about his aunt and uncle. <laughs> gotta be. The whole lineage. That probably makes them hotter to him. Oh, for sure. I mean, they're white, so that already ticks a pretty important box. That's such a weird tangent for him to go down. So we're going to bring it back around for these last two clips. Um, we haven't talked about Obama in a minute. You want to do Obama, Black Fathers, and then we'll get the hell out of here? Sure. This is weird, man, because you say shit like this as a white person and all hell would break loose. Whitey. Isn't this, is this stereotyping saying that uh, black fathers need to spend more time with their kids? Uh, if a white person says it, it's uh, horribly bad, a racist, and um, you should be fired from whatever job you have. If a black person says it, um, usually they're an Uncle Tom who uh, should um, mind their own business and not uh, cater to the white man. What? I think it's important for context that I think a lot of what their reactions to what can get you fired yeah. is directly related to Imus. Mm. I think that's still fresh in their minds mm -hmm. that Imus said what he said and prominent people in the black community, namely like Reverend Al Sharpton and I think Jesse Jackson... Uh, swept down pretty hard and wanted him to be fired. Mm -hmm. So now all of a sudden it's, well, you can't say anything. Yeah. So according to them, you can't even say black fathers should be more present in their children's lives or you're going to get fired. You're going to get fired and killed and slaughtered. Yeah. They're talking about clips from a some appearance Obama made on his campaign um, just talking about how important black parents are to the family and all that. We've heard it. Mm -hmm. It's just... Their takes on it are weird. 
We know that more than half of all black children live in single parent households. Wow, it's half. more than half. You said it, okay. A number that's doubled since we were children. We know the statistics that children who grow up with a fa out of father are five times more likely to live in poverty. What is that all about, by the way? Like, mm. like I was always scared shitless of, um, you know, getting a girl pregnant. This was after a really big chunk talking about Anthony and the fertility clinic and all that, about how he does not wear condoms. Okay. And how he will always, he never pulls out, we've talked about this before, we're going to criticize black people for having children, I guess, but we're not going to nearly criticize people like Anthony, who, according to him anyway, he's never had to pay for an abortion He's yeah. never worried about ever getting somebody pregnant. He doesn't he, have any kids, he no. says. Conveniently enough for him, it's just 100% of the time he hasn't had anything to worry about. But now it's worth a fucking segment and a break on the goddamn show to talk about because Obama said something you, as a white person... Are taking personally. Yeah. Why does the black man, like, have no problem with that? Because he obviously is just getting bitches... Bitches... Yeah, that's why they usually have a couple of um, but, but why wouldn't you just make baby sure, mamas but, out there. But why wouldn't you make sure that you're not having kids if you want to, you know, get as much pussy as possible? Yeah, I, I think, don't get that. I don't think it's that. I think look, I think a lot of white girls will go get an abortion and and, and not have the baby. A black girl will have the baby because you know, not just, I, I don't want you know, all black people, but if you, if you don't have that much money, if you have a baby, you get money from the government. You get taken care of for a while. No, if you some, get married, that gets taken away from you. It's some cultural thing. That uh, it it just goes deep. I don't know what it is, but there's some cultural thing where, um, I don't know. It seems like black guys really kind of want to share the wealth, you know, spread the seed. Yeah, but kind black of a girls thing. want to have the baby too. Yeah, yeah, they want to have the baby. It's okay I, to have a baby. I don't know what it is culturally, but then shut the fuck up. Yeah, like it's something culturally. I don't know though. Then maybe like, don't talk about it. Maybe it's also a case-by-case -case basis and don't fucking generalize the whole fucking community. I gotta give Bobby at least some credit by saying not all black people do this. Even yeah, though, that was still sort of a says, surprise. It, it's kind of strange um, for him to say this anyway. Yeah. But at least you're not generalizing. That's the, that's the least I can give you some credit yeah. for. Yeah. But yeah, o, o and A though. Yeah. There's I'm, surprised, I'm surprised Anthony didn't go down the whole like um, oh, you know, I'm just gonna make them all seem like animals, like he loves to do. Yeah, he still has some restraint. Yeah, he, you can tell he was going down there, though, where he was like, oh, it's some cultural thing where the guys just want to spread their seed as if, like, they can't help themselves. Yeah. As if, like, they have to do the supposed biological imperative of just like, oh, you gotta get your seed as much, out as much as possible. What the fuck are you doing, Anthony? And how much research are you doing on this? Anthony, what do you think there is a difference between you wanting to fucking go raw and come in everybody versus what you refer to as spreading seed? That's yeah. literally what you're doing. Yeah. I also want to remind the people at home that there is someone who works on the show nicknamed Cream Pie Jones for doing the same thing. Yeah. Why, why, why doesn't Anthony have a nickname? Why aren't we making fun of him, but we make fun of old Jared, I think his name was. We gotta make fun of Jared every chance he comes in. Yeah. Comes in. Oh. Oh. And with that. Pie in the face. Oh. Well. Not, not in the face. Maybe at the end. Maybe in Jared's face. Oh. You know. Green oh. pie in the face. Oh. Oh. He, you know. Yeah. He's fine with it. Yeah, right. He's, a, he's into it. Uh, he deals with a lot of things on the show that have to do with bodily things, so yeah, maybe. Maybe. He wore, um... He, he, he... <laughs> uh oh He wore a duty hat. He can't do that. On XM he can. Oh, oh on wait. XM. No, it was on FM. <gasps> did they have to cut the whole segment? No, I think it was... Uh, okay. So what they did was, um... It's two videos, and they're both online. Don't look for him, anybody. Please don't. I don't know where you can find them, but the first instance um, is a video called Big Boy Made a Duty. 
What happens is Jim Norton goes to the bathroom. It's a studio. It's a bathroom attached. It's probably on Pornhub. To the studio. Is it's like shit on Pornhub. No, I don't believe so. It's probably on some website. Probably. I think it's on Daily Motion. Don't look for it. <laughs> um. So Jim Norton comes out of the bathroom. He just took a shit. Um. Cream Pie Jones. He has a hat made out of a newspaper. He has a smaller hat made out of a newspaper also that he puts on the shit and then flushes down the toilet. That's the first video. Okay, that's not too terrible. The second video. Cream Pie Jones is forced to take off his baseball hat, put it in the toilet. Jim Opie then pisses and shits in his hat. He then has to put the hat back on and someone smacks the hat. <laughs> into it, his hair i find it so funny mm. that if you if this if these same people were to discover that piss and shit kinks existed jim has a a, a shit kink so oh okay i yeah. didn't know that yep yeah so like they, they, they're very well aware of so this. wait so wait is jim out here just forcing his fetish on people uh, i don't know about that uh, i don't know i mean let's all <laughs> hope everyone consented it is very strange the culture, and I'm sure we'll talk about this in a later episode, perhaps more in depth, the culture of the show specifically revolving around the interns. Oh, yeah. Because there was somebody who got hired named Bob, and one day I'll make a list of all the people that are working for the show. I meant to do it at this time. I think it's it's between 10 and 20 people. He's an intern, new, hit, new hire, named Bob, and Steve, their producer, in their interview, told him, okay, so Bob, it's very likely that they're going to make fun of your ears. Oh, just like look at They're probably going to make fun of your skin color. They're probably going to make... Yeah, and it's just like, I'm just letting you know. Yeah. They're going to... Yeah. And also, you're not going to get paid? I don't think interns get paid. No, I think it's for college. You credit. get paid in experience. Ooh. And that experience is... Trauma. Being traumatized. Yeah, yeah. I think there's a reason you don't hear too many of the ONA interns coming out and talking about their experiences after they leave. Probably not the proudest moments of their lives. They don't even put it on a resume. Nah, I would be very surprised if you did. My experience I, was I never want to go into radio. I'm done. Uh, it's a career path. It's a career yeah. change for me. Yeah, I'm uh, going into coding. So, yeah, ultimately, ultimately what they do, it's not too bad, at least not yet. For what I've heard, he, 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 he's a very pale guy, so what they do oh. is they just say he looks British, so every time he comes in studio, you know, because British people are pale, because there's not a lot of sunlight, that's the joke, Okay. that every time he comes in studio, uh, everybody talks to him in a British accent and insists that he only speak in a British accent every time he comes in studio. That's, that's... Comparatively speaking... Yeah, that's, that's probably pretty funny. Bob, it, you know, I, honestly, it would... If they didn't run it into the fucking ground. Well, no, probably it's funny in terms of like, you know, any joke can be fucking run into the ground. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 After the end of the first episode they do this, Jim is already making acknowledgments of how much he hates the bit and wants it to end because they do it way too fucking much. And it's also sort of wholesome. So like, that's the thing, man. This isn't edgy enough. This isn't going to get me off. Edgy enough. No, this isn't someone shitting on my chest. When are we going to shit on Bob? When are we going to shit on Jim? Oh, the show is weird, y'all. Here's the thing. Uh, and I, I wanted to mention this at some point that I think it's very funny the way we're presenting the show to you because you're getting like one fiftieth of what the show actually is. Right. The show goes on for five hours a day. For fucking centuries. Yeah. Yeah. It's five. It's five hours a day for, I think, three years. The rest of it, it's like four years, uh, four hours rather. It's a very long show. They do a lot. They talk about a lot. They cover a lot. And I'm only presenting so much of it to you. There's a lot of context you're not hearing. Uh, a lot of the bits and a lot of the gags that don't necessarily lead, <coughs> lead to anything fruitful for the show. It's not included. So yeah, there's a bunch of shit that if I thought it was interesting to anybody, I'd tell y'all. But it's honestly not. So if it's just kind of passively interesting, I might bring it up. But yeah, I'll, I'll spare y'all for most of it. 
Um, but like I was going to say, uh, that wraps it up this week's episode. Uh, good times. Wraps it up like a little newspaper hat with poop in it. Yep. No, wait, I... You gotta flush the duty hat <laughs> down the toilet, and that's what we're doing this week. Clogged the toilet with the newspaper. And now it's CBS's problem. But until next time... Until next time. For going off... For oh, no. Going off. <laughs> If you didn't say until next time, you threw me off. I'm going to do it again. Until next until time. Until next time. For, for ODT ODT Talks. ODT Talks. Never Never Muse. Muse and Kiwi. And uh, we're just going to leave you with this. Meow. Under, the, under their leadership, it, it evolved into the nation's first lesbian advocacy uh, organization. Mm. They have the FBI files to prove it. The fucking, oh, the, the FBI the was feds, on them. The feds were on them. Ah!